Hello, inventors and entrepreneurs. My name is Courtney Laskowitz, and I am the Managing Director of Inventors Groups of America, and welcome to Inventors Online. If you are hearing me talk right now, you have made it in. Congratulations, and thank you everyone so much for coming to this very exciting meeting today. Now, a little bit of a backstory on IGA. IGA was founded in 2017 by Stephen Key and Andrew Krauss, who are on with us today. Uh, our goal here is twofold. We want to teach individuals how to best commercialize their product ideas, as well as strengthen and support inventor groups throughout the nation. We also have a directory of local and regional inventors groups on our website. And if you're located near one, we highly encourage you to join. IGA is a place for inventors to be able to learn and grow together. We hold monthly meetings for inventors, uh, inventor group leaders, as well as hold public educational webinar series once a month where we bring on industry experts. Now today, today you are here for our Inventors Online, America's Inventors Group. Uh, we'd love to hear your name and what state or country you are from. So right now, while we're going through all this, we'd love it if you'd go on over and open the chat box uh, and let us know uh, state, country, your name. Uh, also, just a friendly reminder, please do not disclose anything that is uh, confidential and not already publicly available. Uh, also, our meeting is being recorded for internal purposes. All right, so a little bit of housekeeping before we go on and get to our uh, guest speaker today. Uh, feel free to change your name in the participants panel to your first name so we can call on you at the end if you have a question. Uh, you can also choose to be in speaker mode or gallery mode, it only affects you. That's located at the top right of your screen and you can feel free to change it multiple times at any time through the presentation. We also really encourage you to turn on your video. Of course, it's not necessary, uh, but we would love to see you. We've also placed the rules in the chat box up at the top as well. All right, so we now have our co-founders on, Stephen Key and Andrew Kraus. But before we go any further, I would like to introduce who will be talking about the toy and game industry and how to pitch with us tonight. Our keynote speaker of the night, the woman of the hour. Let's give it up for the outstanding April Mitchell. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and go through some things with you that I have found uh, very helpful um, in pitching um, in the toy and game industry. So I'm super excited to, to share them with you. And at the end, we'll have some Q&A and we'll answer your questions. So thanks for coming, everyone. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, April. Uh, speaking of the Q&A, um, uh, we will definitely open up the floor uh, uh, after the end of the presentation. Uh, during the presentation, uh, this is how you can get your questions answered. So during, please type in your questions into the chat box. And at the end, we will pick a question and unmute you if you're able to. And then uh, you can go ahead and ask that question directly to April. Uh, before we get started into the presentation, Stephen uh, and Andrew, would you guys like to say anything before we uh, go ahead and get started? Uh, I, would, I would just like to say that April is the right person to be talking about this. I went to, we went to Chi Tag together, which is a toy and game inventors forum in Chicago. This woman is passionate about toys and games, guys. She really is. She's the right person to be educating you on this topic. And I'm just so happy that she's going to share her wisdom with you guys tonight. Thank you, Andrew. Steven? I just wanted to mention, I want to welcome everybody. And I see a lot of familiar faces there. I see Lisa. Uh, Lisa Lloyd over there, and of course, Kevin Prince, just to name a few. And uh, Megan, hi, Megan, I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm glad you're there. And there's a lot of other people there. I see Blake, he builds prototypes. I'm sure he's going to be adding some things tonight, hopefully. And I see a lot of the leaders. I see Mike Turner. Hey, Mike, how, how are you doing over there? And uh, I think I see Jeffrey. And of course, Miha is halfway around the world and many, many others too. I see Neil there too. So I just wanna welcome everyone for, for joining us tonight. And I really look forward to this presentation. The toy industry is not an easy industry. Uh, maybe for others, it just wasn't for me. So I jumped out as quick as I could to find an industry that was a little easier for me. So I'm really looking forward to this presentation tonight. So thank you very much, April. You're welcome. Great. All right. Thank you both. And we can go ahead and get started when we bring up your presentation. All right. All 
All right, you've got the floor. Okay. Well, this is just the beginning slide, right? <laughs> with, with our photos on it. So um, just a little backstory. Just a couple of weeks ago, I pitched to uh, about 40 companies in just one week and five days. So it was really neat to have the opportunity to wake up early in the morning and pitch to one part of the world, you know, a company in one country, and then throughout the day in the U.S., and then end my night pitching to um, companies in, in a totally another country. So within a span of 12 hours, I was globally pitching, um, you know, uh, multiple companies. So it's really neat to be able to have the opportunity to do that. And we'll talk about um, some ways that I, I help the pitching along. All right, so doing your homework, I think you guys have heard this from uh, Stephen and Andrew before and, and IGA, doing your homework is so important. These are some of the questions I like to ask and I like to know before I pitch to a company. So what I tend to do is I have a notebook page on each company and this is the information I will write down. I wanna know where is the company based out of? That gives you a lot more information then you realize it does. Um, and then does the company have a parent company? Because a lot of times people will ask, well, do I just pitch to that parent company or do I pitch to the companies individually? And it can really depend, but personally I will reach out to the companies individually. And sometimes they may direct you to the parent company, but most often, even with a parent company, they, um, they have the dif their different categories, each of those sub companies do different games, different toys. They do things differently. So just because they're owned by a parent company doesn't mean you necessarily have to pitch to that top company all the time. Sometimes things go through them, um, but I personally like to pitch to the individual company. Uh, another question to know and ask is what categories do they work in? Are they um, educational games? Are they family games? Are they party games? That's going to make a difference because just because there's a game, they're a game company, you don't want to pitch them if your game does not fit with their category. Otherwise, you're wasting their time, you're wasting your time. So find that, that match. And then also, are they a game company, a toy company, or both? Sometimes we tend to think, well, they, they, they have games, so I can pitch them toys too. Not necessarily, and vice versa. Some companies do um, have both games and toys, so you want to know that. And if so, what category? So I personally like to ask when I have a meeting set up or I'm trying to um, get a meeting set up, is what category are you currently looking for? Or are you looking to expand into a new category? Because sometimes they're trying to get into maybe outside toys, but they're not in there yet. So if you looked at their website, you wouldn't see any outside toys. But if you ask them what they're currently looking for or expanding in, then you're going to know which of your products, which of your concepts you should actually pitch to them. And I think it's being, it's, it's being respectful to them as a company for in their time. So um, something to consider. And then what are their specialties? So in those categories, what are their specialties? Because what you can do is if you have, say, uh, a collectible or something that a toy that could maybe go into a line or a brand they already have, you can use that to your advantage. Um, I like to write down their top sellers um, on my paper because I can say, oh, this product of mine, we can make it into the theme of this brand you have. Okay. And so it's important to see, yes, you might be pitching it as a penguin, but it could be as a dolphin, right? This game could maybe be with a dolphin or something. You might be able to change it a little bit um, based off of their theme, their licenses, or their brands they have. And then what concept of yours will fit in and why? If you can't say why it will fit in, then you probably shouldn't be pitching it. Or if it could add to their, their, um, their product line or expand a category, then you might not, it, it might not be a right fit. Like Steven or Andrew, do you have anything you'd like to add or any questions about that? Well, yeah, I got a, just a detailed question for you. Like one of the ways to make a relationship with a company is to send them one product, right? And then you could ask them, well, you know, I, no problem. You're not looking at this one. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Can you do that before you even send them anything? Or do you think you kind of need to send them one first that you think is the right match to kind of establish a back and forth? What do you, what do you think? 
I've done it both ways, to be honest, companies that I'm not as familiar with. And sometimes companies don't even have everything on their site. They might do special private labeling and things like that for companies, for other companies. Um, so I like to ask, I say, I have concepts in preschool, family, party, and I might give them a few things that I have concepts in the different categories. And then I may ask, where are you looking so I can better focus our time together? And I think they, they find that very helpful and respectful because I'm not just throwing ideas at them that I don't, that they're not even looking for. Because for example, I, I pitched one of the companies I pitched to, they loved an idea, laughed, loved it. And they said, but we're not looking for this at this time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if they love a product, if they don't have a space for it at that moment, they won't do it. Most companies won't do it. I think it could depend on the company. If they love something so much, they might make room for it, but I think it's going to depend on the company. So if you can um, determine that beforehand, I think you'll then concentrate your time better with them on the, the concepts that would fit in the category. But some companies are looking for that wild card that we, we've heard that you know said before too. So if you've got something that doesn't fit in their category, but you just think, it, it's it's the number one hit, which I know we all think everything is the number one hit, so it's hard, right? But but something totally different. Um, then I think it's worth pitching if you've got time at the end, or maybe it's something where um, it's so silly it might just break the ice. If it's a new company that you haven't pitched to, it might just get them laughing and break the ice. Um, at whether it might not be the best fit, it it could just um, start things off. You know, on hey, the right. I've got a question. Sometimes mm -hmm. when you're trying to do your homework and you go to their website, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell what they're looking for, isn't it? I mean, it can be. You have to read between the lines sometimes, right? I mean, how do you how do you do a deeper dive? Do you look at their mission statement? Maybe they have a blog. I mean, how do you really dig a little deeper? Because sometimes it's not obvious, is it? You're right. You're right. I think looking at their about page, I like here reading their story, how they got started. I think that tells a lot about the company and the owners. So I think it's anything you can read and then follow them on LinkedIn, read their posts. If they're excited about this new game coming out or they just did an interview or an article, you should be reading that. You should be knowing why they're excited about this new product and how it's different um, and what it took for them to get it onto the market. So doing your homework helps you out and it helps the company out. Thank you. You're welcome. We could go to the next slide, Courtney. Thank you. Okay, different ways to pitch. Um, there are three different ways I find um, to pitch. And one is sending in a sell sheet uh, and a video via email. Um, and we'll go into those in just a moment. And then setting up a meeting to pitch live on Zoom or Skype. And then also pitching at a show, which we know uh, we aren't doing <laughs> right now. So really the two ways right now are sending in a sell sheet and a video via email. And so we always want to get permission to do that and, um, and then give that information in a good way. And I think we're going to dive into that on the next slide here. There we go. Okay. So one, you want to get permission to send your marketing materials. So don't just send um, your sell sheet or a video link on LinkedIn to someone. Um, if you're able to get their email, then you want to, of course, get that permission. And then in the subject line, you wanna make sure that subject line is catchy or contains your referral. So for example, if I have um, a new exciting game, I'm going to maybe write the, the tagline or a benefit statement. Benefit statements are really the same for, uh, for games and toys. It, it's a little bit different. I think that's a whole nother um, webinar on its own. But you want something catchy in that um, subject line. I learned quickly that saying new product for review is not fun, guys. <laughs> That's not, it's not going to catch their attention, right? Um, if you were referred to by someone else, say you reached out on LinkedIn to someone from the company and you asked who would be the best person to send your marketing material with, and they said, oh, send it over to Janice Jones and marketing, and they give you their email. Then what I would say in the subject line is maybe that catchy phrase and then dash was referred to by Cindy so-and-so. So that way they know 
okay, this person was referred to me. It's probably okay to open the, the email. And then in that email, I will provide, you know, a little bit of information and then a video. So you wanna always have a video for a toy and a game. The sell sheets are great. I think it's a nice wrap up, if you will, of the video. But in the toy and game industry, you really need that pitch video, that sizzle video, because if you get one chance, in my mind, I would rather take the chance of a video than a sell sheet because things you can't always um, get across what you want to, the whole story, the whole game in just a sell sheet. And then also you want to be sure to let them know you are here to help answer any of their questions, okay? You wanna sound helpful because that's what you are. You, you're here to help answer their questions. You're happy to jump on a, a call, quick call if they need, need anything, if they need more materials please let you know, those kinds of things. So make sure they know that in the video. And then follow up timely and professionally. I like to ask when their team product review will be that I may follow up in a timely manner. This makes it so you're not emailing them every week. If they say our meeting, if it's like the third of the month, for example, and they say our next product review will be on the 25th, don't email them until after the 25th because they told you when the review will be. You're just gonna annoy them, I think. You're just gonna annoy them if you know the date they're reviewing. So if you know the date they're reviewing, give them a couple of days and follow up afterwards. If you're not able to get a date, then I would say, you know, give them an initial couple of weeks and then start you know, following up every seven to 10 days or so um, and, and keep following up until you get a yes or a no. Because sometimes it can take a, a time, quite a time and sometimes you can even send the same email or similar email five, six, seven times. And then all of a sudden, the 12th time, they open it and say they love your product. And you're like, have you seen any of my other emails? And you don't know if they really did, but you don't want to ask them, right? Because they love your product and now they want to do a deal. So just keep following up because you don't know when they're going to open that email. April, so. I just want to pause here for a second and say building that relationship seems like it's uh, maybe a little bit more important than we put weight on. I'm, I'm glad you you kind of mentioned that, you know, if they put a date that uh, they put that there for a reason. So I just wanted to pause and say, it, it seems like building a relationship is not necessarily just about the product uh, or yourself or maybe helping them, you know, a little bit uh, get mm -hmm. that product out there, but building that relationship. So maybe you can uh, license other product ideas for a continuing ongoing uh, long-term relationship seems to be really important. You're, you're exactly right. You want to get to the point where you're asking about their kids and how their move was and things like that. I mean, this past summer we did a cross country move and on my lap, my follow up after I literally took about a month off between follow ups. I, you know, I said, ah, oh, how you're doing? We just made a cross country move. I told people that um, just to give them a little background, more info of me and, and then started following up and whatnot. And then, then you, you build that rapport, they know where you're living, and then maybe that seems odd, you don't need to tell them your whole life story. Okay, this is with people who I've pitched to before, it wasn't just my first email to these companies, but it was in that relationship building, I'm following up um, with things like that. And so I think letting them in on who you are is, a, is an important thing, it can be an important thing to build that relationship. Um, up and then you, you get on the next Zoom call and you have to stop your small talking so you can get pitching because you can just keep talking because you really have a relationship with them. And that, that April, is key. Yeah, April, I have a question about that because how important is it to have that relationship? I know there's, there's other people out there that wanna be a middleman. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's um, toy brokers. Sure. Uh, how important to you is having that relationship and why? To me, it's really important because one, I, I'm going to pitch my product better than anyone else. Uh, and then uh, they're going to get to know me and then what they can expect from me. They're going to know what kind of products I'm going to pitch and, and how I'm evolving. And I'm going to get that feedback directly from them because I asked for feedback. And what's been so important is there's been integral, um, community members in this industry that have given me such great feedback um, that I've developed as an inventor because of that feedback. And if there was a middleman, I would not be getting that feedback. 
when I was able to um, pitch to a company for a second time and they loved my sell sheet, which I have to give a shout out to the you know design studio at Inventrite, loved my sell sheet. They said, now, this is really good. Do you want me to pitch it to you how I would pitch it? And I said, oh, of course. Got out my notebook and he pitched it to me how he would want me to pitch it. And I learned so much early on in, in the, this game, in the toy industry, um, that you can take all these, these feedback from different companies and what they're looking for. For example, they say, yeah, we're an education company, but, but we are looking for these kinds of games in, in, in education. And that's different from these kinds of games. So once you really get to know these companies, they're gonna not just give you their wish list, but really help you decipher the difference. And they want you to succeed. They want to do something. And so even if product doesn't go all the way, but it goes to the second and third level and they're like, oh, I really wanted one. And they were rooting for you because they liked your product too. And they liked the concept. And when they end their email, we're like, I'm really sorry. I really wish this one went, I went through. We're going to get one together. Like then you know you've got something. And I don't think you can get that with a middleman. One last question before we move on. Prototypes. Mm. Um, I know they're very effective. Right? Oh, yeah. they, they work for your video. People can touch and feel them if you do send it to them as well, because they, they want that proof of concept. Mm -hmm. But do you build a prototype for every idea you have? I do. However, some is just paper cards and cardboard. So it's a different level of prototype. Some you might, might um, hire out because you really need it to work that way. And some you can do going to the local hardware store and spend $25. That was one of my um, uh, most recent um, licenses was $25 with my teenager helped me build this prototype. And, you know, and, but then I have some that are literally cardboard and some that are awesome working prototypes. And some I've, I've even had a couple of game boards that were finished by artists. So we, I have all different levels and I think it depends on the actual product and the concept. And you have to do with, with if, if it's a board game, for example, or with lots of moving pieces, you have, it takes a long time to work out that gameplay. And you have to then throw things out and bring new cards in, or let's try this way and that way. And if you're doing something and having it professionally, deck of cards made every time you had to redo the gameplay, you'd be spending a fortune. So I think anything, especially with cards and um, game boards, cardboard and paper till you get it all figured out. And sometimes that's enough anyway, okay. um, before spending the money on things. And some things you do have to show that proof of concepts. So you may need something a little bit um, more than that. So I think it depends on each individual concept, but, I, but I've done it all ranges. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Pitching over Skype and Zoom. Okay. So one thing uh, you want to make sure is you set up a meeting ahead of time. Don't expect that they're going to drop everything um, the moment they respond to you on LinkedIn, right? That they're going to drop everything and say, yes, let's do a Zoom call right now. So try to plan that out and know that it may take some time getting that, that Zoom call or uh, that Skype meeting. And then next, I like to set the stage by evoking an emotion or memory if possible. So sometimes this is gonna be more difficult than others. I like to use um, like real time, real hands, real body parts. Um, when I'm doing this, I might put something silly on, I might show something um, and then do a little explaining and then show them a video for the whole picture. But if I can draw them in by asking a couple of questions or being silly, um, that's what I wanna do. Because I don't want to just say, oh, here's my video. Because I could have just sent that, right? I, I want to see them smile. I want to surprise them maybe a little bit um, and then show them the video and talk more in depth with something. Um, start with the silliest or funniest game to open everyone up. I think if you can get someone laughing on, on, on your pitch, you've done it, okay? And the energy, and this is something I didn't put here, but it should be energy. You need to bring the energy and the fun. Because if you're sitting here talking about how fun your game is, nobody is gonna believe it's fun. They're just not, okay? So you've got to have the high energy. You've gotta do whatever you gotta do to get that energy. Um, 
And so bring the energy. And then, like I said, I quickly walked them through a cell sheet identifying um, key points. And this isn't for every um, concept. Sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't. I think you really have to evaluate the product and think, okay, is this going to show them, give them a little to pique their interest and then I boom, hit them with a video or could this take away from the whole thing and I should do it at the end as kind of a wrap up. So you have to really take a look at your concept and decide, would this be better in the beginning or at the end? And you'll get to know that. And I don't think that is necessarily a make or break, um, but I think you'll start to get the feel of that. And then show the game being played live or show a video. So the week I had 40 uh, meetings, I uh, definitely had to show video. Now, if I can show a video or a, a game being played live, I will do that. So what I do, this is when I just have a one meeting on a Thursday randomly, you know, in the afternoon, I will be on my phone for the Skype or the Zoom call and I'll talk to them, you know, do a little intro. And then I walk out to my kitchen or my living room where I've got the kids already, the game set up, the, the, the cards are stacked to exactly what I want to happen. And I have the kids play the game. And instead of them watching in a video, they're seeing live action game being played. And I'm explaining, okay, this is happening. And now this is going to do this. And they're watching it unfold as it's happening. Now, of course, you cannot do this with every game and concept. You cannot invite five kindergartners over to play a game for the first time live while you're pitching it. I do not recommend that, okay? You have to have um, people <laughs> that know the game, know how to play, and are like warned very carefully about their behavior, <laughs> right? Um, for, for this game, or at least in our family. So, so I think if you're able to do that, I think it's really fun. I wouldn't necessarily do that with every company. I've done it with companies that um, I've pitched to five, six, seven times. I've done it on a first call before because I had a new game and I didn't even have a video yet. And this person was gonna be the first one to see it. Hey, and then they, okay, that was great. Can you send me a video? I'm like, I'll get you a video in a week. So it just really depends. But if you can do it, I think it's fun to do that. But I would not recommend putting your family through that call after call after call, you know, all week long. That, that, that definitely wouldn't be good for anybody. And I don't think they would then sh see um, it having fun because if you play a game for 20 times in a row, <laughs> you might not have, have, have so much fun um, at the end of it. Um, and then follow up the email with um, a link to the video for them to share with their team and the sell sheet. And then that also of course gives you that paper trail because even if you set up your meeting over email or LinkedIn, then you want to say, okay, thank you for your time. Here's the video to review. And, you know, there you go. Um, and then, of course, with the questions of please let me know if you have any questions, how can I help? And ask when their team review would be. So that would be good. Um, excuse me, just for a second. It's getting really cold in here. I'm sorry. I know this seems just really rude. Just one second. One second. Oh, sorry guys, I had to get my hat. Like you would not be <laughs> like, you would not even understand how much this hat just warms me up. It's super cool. I had put my mittens on. It's like as if it could almost snow here in North Carolina, which apparently it does once in a while, but, but um, it's super cold. So goodness. Steven, did you, did you ever play in the snow as a kid? Of course. Of course. What was your favorite thing to do in the snow? Make um, snowballs and throw them. No way. That is my favorite thing to do too. You see, I, I love that feeling you get when you just nail someone with a snowball. Like you kind of feel guilty, like you should feel bad, but you really don't feel bad. Right. Am I right? That's right. It feels good. Right. So I love snowballs so much. Um, and, and they're just so much fun. And now, now Steven, you'd never believe this. I, I know it's going to just be wild. But now you can play snowball fight all year round, okay, all year round um, and get that good feeling and that fun all year round without the cold and without that random injury because somebody always gets like a slush ball and an eyeball, right? So you've got to check this video out. Courtney, can you show, show Steven this video? It's, it's awesome.
Oh, and disclaimer, this is not my product. You ready for it, Stephen? I'm ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on one second, guys. All right. I know it's hard to believe this hat keeps my head warm, but it really does. It does wonders. How did I get one of those? Yeah. It's you, you added more than just the hat. You got something going on with the ears, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I got the ears. Sound going on here. Okay, this is our plan. Snow time, anytime. She'll never see it coming. Crunches like a real snowball. But no mess, and even no frostbite. Made from super soft materials. Keep them busy for hours. for any type of party or a get-together. Snow time anytime is fun for all ages. Snow time anytime, snowballs of fun! All right, so um, the whole idea here was to kind of catch Stephen off guard with my fun hat, right? Um, and then me invoking some emotion about snowball fights, right? Because you now we're talking about, you know, childhood and memories. And then I show them a video of my new product, which again, this is not really mine, but as an example of my new product that can allow him to have snowball fights all year long. So uh, this is what I like to do when I pitch on Zoom. Okay, I might not have a costume per every game, <laughs> um, but I try to, um, you know, have a little fun and invoke that emotion and get a little conversation going if, when, and if possible. Well, you got me, April. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. Congratulations. It did get me. Um, I, you know, what's so amazing about that. I think you're absolutely right. It, it did it caught me off guard. It brought me back to when I was a kid. I could see the fun. I could experience it. Um, very well done. I have a question though. Mm -hmm. Life has changed, right? Mm -hmm. Has it changed um, now that you're using Zoom? Because I know you've done in-person pitches. I know you've done Shy Tag, New York Toy Fair. Um, now you're doing Zoom, has it changed at all? Because what you just showed me was very effective, probably more so kind of, it seems like to me, you, you, ca you, you have all my attention, I'm not being distracted. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's a very powerful tool. Have you found that it's better, worse, or just different? You know, I, I think there's, there's more positives about it. And then there's, there's the, the, just the different. So I think it allows for a quick switch out and I've got a table here, which tip usually has all my, you know, products lined up and I could just grab where at a show, Andrew, Andrew was there with me. I had a suitcase, you know, and, and I had videos where I could show them on the iPad, but I'd rather bring it out and show them in person. So one, I'm, you're able to get through so many more presentations and I don't mean that to sound awful, but you can see so many companies and you okay. can present so many items in that 30 minutes uh, over Zoom and Skype than I could if I was at the show. Because at the show, you're showing them a sell sheet, taking them through that, and then you're like, do you want to see? And you're trying to find the other thing. Sometimes you set things up beforehand, and then you start your presentation. So you lose a lot of time. 
And so with this and having everything set up right next to me and just grab, grab in my notes and I know exactly, you know, I order what concepts for which company and what they need to see first and second. Um, and you've got everything laying out there. You can be really effective, I think, um, and time efficient with things. Nice. Definitely. April, we got a bunch, a couple people said in the chat, they asked, how often are you pitching multiple products when you're on Zoom? Um, are you just pitching one? Or are you always pitching multiple? Well, I always have, um, I, I like to always have a good few ready. This um, last show, I had six new concepts that I was pitching for this show. Um, but it be, you know, it depends on the company. There was a handful of companies where I only showed them one thing because only one thing would actually fit in their category. Now, if, if we got done with that, I said, hey, if you're open to any any other ideas in you know, preschool or family or party, I'd give them some, some options. I said, I'd be happy to show them. Sometimes be like, yeah, let, let's see what you got, we're here. And then I show them some things, you know, um, and some would be like, no, we're only looking here and we end the meeting early and I thank them for their time. So it, it could go either way. But, um, you know, I started off with only pitching one, concept at a time so don't feel like you have to show up with six concepts your first meeting with 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 companies I started with one and then I then I would gear things and get ready for shows so in in um I for the last several months I've been working on these six and not really showing too many companies them so I can show them all at one time and and, and use um make use of that 30 minutes that I knew I was going to get um, and then I would do the same for the next show. I will have a few new products and then any companies that maybe I'm pitching to that I've never pitched before, then I'll pitch the ones that they haven't seen as well. And so then that kind of adds on to it. Um, so you, because I'm always adding to my hit list, always. Like there's, you've never ever found every company out there. Uh, April, one quick question. I know there's a lot of people watching maybe for the first time and they have not reached out to a company before. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you're doing this through email and maybe through LinkedIn, let's say you have not approached this company before, but you have done the homework and you're mm -hmm. going to reach out to them, let's say through LinkedIn, what would that first message be? Gosh, I should just, I should bring up my, my, my normal message. Um, it, it, this isn't verbatim, but it usually goes something like, hi, hi, Steven, uh, I have a new product that I'd love to submit to your company for review. Can I please send that marketing material directly to you? Or is there someone you can refer me to? I might say something that I, uh, you know, I may some, say something as in, like, I think it will fit great in this line or the, with this brand, you know, so they know I know the company. So if I can be specific a little bit, I think that's helpful as well. And then I ask whether I can send it to them or if they can refer me to someone. I don't ask, can they give me the person? I, I try to lay it out like they're going to give me their information or somebody else's. So think about the questions and how you ask those questions. I think a lot important. of people are nervous for the first time. They think that they have to have a track record or a resume in no. order to do this. Do you ever, I know you've licensed an idea, not only in kitchen now, but in the toy industry. Do you leverage that or, you, or do you just kind of jump in or does that really matter? Because people would think they have to have something done already. Right, well, everybody's got to start somewhere. Everyone's got to start with no products license, right? Okay. We all started the same, same way. So I don't think they need to know that either okay. way um, and just go in there knowing that you're doing them a favor and be confident because they're lucky to get to look at what you have. Of course, don't be so overconfident that you're rude, but 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 know that they're looking for ideas and they might be that one person in the company that is so excited to bring that new idea in because it's gonna make everyone, you know, really super excited and it could be the next big thing. So know that you're helping them out. Uh, and I know it can be intimidating. I remember making a couple of my first calls all nervous stomach and sweaty and sitting there for 20 minutes before I made this call, like, okay. Okay, you know, and then it becomes natural in these call outs, you find a new company and you don't think twice, you just call up the company or you send them a LinkedIn message. I like to send LinkedIn voice messages. It's great uh, because I can hear the excitement and the in my voice and everything. So if you can get used to doing those, I think those are really great. And just say, hey, I have a new product. I'm really excited to show you. Can I send that directly to you? And, or can you refer me to someone? So I think that's the best way to go. And just remember, they don't answer you. 
just ask somebody else. There's always someone else that can help. So don't, don't take it personal because half the people don't answer half the, the <laughs> messages out there. Right. So it's, it's not you, it's, it's them. They're not on LinkedIn or they just don't answer messages. So just keep at it because someone will help you out. And you just got to try the different avenues, um, finding email, phone calls, um, whatever it takes. Um, so pitch video, we'll go through this quickly so we can answer some questions. Um, begin with a confidential slide. I like to write confidential on it. If you can have confidential stay at the bottom the whole time, I think that's beneficial. Um, name of the game or toy, your name and company name on the second slide. And then you wanna walk through the gameplay describing how to play your game or use the toy. Um, just like in that video they did, they explained it. Um, and then make your game or toy look like the most fun thing ever. Just like when you're pitching, you've gotta have high energy, you have, have to have it exciting. You can um, add some fun music on there to, to spruce it up and make it more exciting. But definitely, um, make sure it looks like it's fun. <laughs> if nobody's smiling in the video, don't show the video. Um, because you, you, you do not want to sell yourself short. Um, and then use a voiceover or have words across the bottom of the video explaining things and have your contact information at the end of, you know, in a slide format at the end so they can contact you. And then of course, you know, something that I didn't mention here is really plan that video out, make a, a script, a video script and know like, okay, I'm gonna get this shot of a close up, and this is what's gonna be said. And we're gonna get a, you know, um, a, another angle or a view this way. And then this is what's said. And that really helps you determine what photos and videos to use um, to then piece it together. And I don't think you always need to to hire someone out for a video. Most of my videos are done, you know, just, just by me learning iMovie. Um, and recently I, I've hired a couple of them out, um, but the majority of them I do on my own. So just know as long as you're showing that energy and that fun and you're explaining the video while they're playing it in the steps um, and how to win, then, then you, you've got a winner. So, and then pitching at a show, this um, I know isn't relevant now, but someday it will be, I hope. Again, um, schedule a meeting time prior to the show starting, and then you can set up more meetings while you're at the show. So um, you can always um, you know, walk the show, meet people, give them your card, get their card. Sometimes you can pitch right there on the spot. Sometimes that you can schedule a meeting for another day. It's amazing being at a show. I love the energy of the show. I love meeting new people. Uh, a show is great. So if you ever have the opportunity, it's not necessary, but if you have the opportunity and you can go, I think it's a great way to, to meet people. Um, and then you want to go prepared with samples, sell sheets to show them, but not hand out and videos to show them as well. So sell sheets, um, if you hand them out, it's so fast paced, you might forget. I always try to every booth I would stop at, I would write down who I chatted with, that I got their card, this and that. But things are so fast paced, you could forget who you give a sell sheet to and then not you know, get their info. And um, it would be hard to keep track of that. So, and then uh, start off by showing the sell sheet and go through your information at the show. I like to pull out samples and play the game or a couple rounds. Um, and then, so you want to stack the deck to show the key features. Like you want things to happen those first few hands so that they can see that happening live and be experiencing that um, when possible. And then show a video if needed or necessary. If you're able to pitch at a show and you, you uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you play a couple hands, then you can always follow up with the video for them to see the whole video later on because they're not most likely they're not gonna be making any decisions right there. It happens, you know, for some people, but most likely they're gonna to need to show that video to somebody else. Um, and then follow up uh, the next week via email to send the sell sheet and the video. And so, and then after the pitch, okay. Follow up with a thank you email and ask if they have any questions that you can help with. If you get a no, kindly ask for feedback. This is so important and ask if you can send more ideas or concepts their way. Most of the time, the companies are gonna say, yes, definitely. And so, but that feedback is super important. That's what helped me um, change some things on one of my recent um, 
uh, licensing agreements was I had only kids in the video and they're like, well, this says for everyone and it could be for everyone, but you only have kids in this video. And so what did I do? I went and got some friends and some young Marine friends and had them at the beach playing the game. Now it looks like it's for everybody, right? And I shoot, show the kids playing and then I show the, the adults playing and then I show the kids playing the adult. And so while I'm explaining things, I'm kind of going back and forth to the two different groups of people playing. And then, um, and that helps. And then there's some, also some suggestions with, with the prototype and things like that. So um, we cannot listen to all the feedback all the time, but if you're getting some key points, really think about that feedback. Like, would this make a difference? Is this something I should consider? Um, and then you, you, I've also was told by uh, one of the greats in the industry, um, you know what, sometimes you just don't listen to anybody. If you know you've got a product, just keep going your, you know, and, and, and be stern about it and, and steady with it and, and you'll license it. And that's what happened with my last product. I kept thinking, oh, do I need to change this? And do I need to change this? And I got this, this great advice. And, and I didn't listen to the other advice, except his was, his advice was to not listen to anybody else's advice in this situation. And then I was able to find that run company that saw it like I saw it. So take that feedback and then decide and weigh it. Um, and then if they are interested, answer their questions the best you can, ask questions about their licensing process, get to know them a bit. Uh, be prepared to have a working prototype sample for them to play test. Games will most likely need to be play tested by the team. Okay, a lot of times we say, you know, we teach don't so for, you know don't send a prototype, don't send a prototype, and I think that is key in most industries and most often. But in the game and toy industry, even if it's paper cards, I've sent paper cards to another country, and while another company said, "Well, just send me the PDF and we'll print them out and cut them and play them ourselves," so you kind of have, you know, some people want them cut and ready, and some people just will print them off. So, but but be prepared to send that sample. So don't make it so it's a five hundred dollar product sample that you don't want to send anyone because it's going to break. Make it so it's playable for them to use. Okay. And then, of course, um, do your homework, understanding what makes a good licensing deal so you can be ready to make one. All right. And then the key things to remember, um, relationship building is important. I cannot stress this enough. You guys, I started pitching in this industry um, in, in 2018. And just this fall, I got my recent licensing contracts. I had to stay in it. I had to learn. I had to build those relationships. So it can take time. Someone might get their first game and boom, got it in six months. Awesome. I guess maybe I'm a slower learner. I don't know. But no, um, some things, it just takes time. It, it takes them saying, yeah, show me your next thing. Show me your next thing. Um, and then when you be able to get on a phone call just to discuss what they're looking for, that's when you know you're in it. That's when you know, okay, this is what they're looking for. I'm going to make something with these guidelines and pitch it to them. That's when you know you're in it. So those relationships are important and think the long game. Like I just said, with my example of, you know, being in the industry for a couple of years before getting a licensing deal here, um, be polite, polite persistence and positivity matter. Okay. Don't burn any bridges, be polite, stay positive. And the most important thing, have fun. If you are not having fun pitching and presenting your game or toy, you are in the wrong business and industry <laughs> because this should be fun and you should be having fun pitching. Um, it's okay to be a little nervous when you're pitching. It's okay. That's normal, but make sure you're having fun. If it's not fun, try a non-fun industry. <laughs> So that's what that that's what I got. I wanted to end on that note. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, April. Really good information. I hope everyone was taking some uh, good notes. If you got a, a toy or a game uh, that you're looking to license. Um, We've got quite a lot of questions. Uh, thank you so much for all these questions. I'm really excited to delve into them. Uh, let me just uh, scroll to the top here and, and uh, see if I can uh, pick one out here. Okay, uh, so we've got um, Da Caps, D-A, David? Is it David, I think? Yes, hi, David, all right. Uh, 
you might have had multiple questions. I'm not sure. Uh, feel free to ask uh, whichever one if you do have uh, multiple. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Thank you, Courtney. <clears throat> I actually already forgot the second question. So <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> the first one. Um, so April, you, you had this uh, uneven hanging thing that you licensed first, right? Yes, yes. And as Stephen mentioned earlier, like the toy industry is probably even more frustrating than the other ones in the terms of rejections and high level of competition. So, so I wanted to ask why you decided to switch from housewares if, if the, the other one is, is on that one to this one, which seemingly seemed to be harder. You just said that it took you over two years to get your first deal. That's a great question. Well, I have four kids. And so we're always having family game night. We're always having fun. Um, so I would just see my kids playing something completely new and say, what, what are you playing and ask questions. And then we, that's how we came up with one of the games was something they were already playing a version of. So I'm really, um, making most of my time with my children um, and and trying to recreate what we're already doing and what they're doing um, and, and make it so other people can play those games and, and do those things. And then we're combining, a lot of our games are combining combinations in a way um, with a new theme of our favorite games that we're playing. So we're, we love this game over here and this one. Well, let's combine them, but then change this theme and do some, add some other things to it. So for me, it was just natural um, to start inventing um, with the family. So we actually invent together. I'm actually pitching one of my son's inventions um, that he completely invented on himself by himself. So we invent together as a family. And then also education is my background. So a lot of the games I pitch are, um, have an education component to it as well. So just being an educator and having four kids, just, I just naturally was kind of doing these things anyway. So I thought, well, let's see, see what can happen with it. So that is so cool. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. And I'll, and I'll add to that. Just, you know, April is just very, very passionate about toys and games. She just loves it. And I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, April, but I think you kind of have to be into that in, in toys and games. You have to have that passion. If you don't, um, I, I don't think it'll work. Right. You, you'll end up probably giving up after a while. And let me just say, I, I probably am pitching and have pitched. It's a numbers game already. And I know you guys have heard that it's a numbers game, but I think in the toy and game industry, it's a numbers game even more so. Um, and so I've pitched over, I probably have at least 14 or 16 games, at least that I've pitched and am pitching. And I've realized now that a couple just aren't going to happen some have been put on the back burner but some just aren't going to happen so i am pitching a lot so i have two licensing agreements from the last two years but i'm pitching a lot and constantly so it it makes a difference how often how consistent how many new ones you're coming up with it, it really makes a difference great thank you so much april april how do you have time to do everything i know you've got kids you're busy i mean how do you find time to do everything that you do well i have to carve out time and when i'm up early and and i stay up really late but like i said my family helps so if, if the kids if we're hanging out we're prototyping or we're play testing so a lot of that is just with our family time so i'm really blessed okay. um that i have them and that they enjoy it still right now there may be a day where they're like okay mom um but but right now everyone's enjoying it and everyone's up for it. So we get to do that as a family, which, which really helps a lot. Great. Uh, we've got a question from Neil. Um, Neil Waldbaum, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. You can ask any of your questions. Hi, April. Um, firstly, thanks. That was a great presentation. I love your energy. It's, it's really addictive. Thank um, you. Uh, you, you kind of already answered my question was, and it was about how many ideas you pitch at once. Um, but I wanted to ask, um, uh, would you let a company know how many ideas you intend to pitch up front if you haven't spoken to them before, if they're not, not expecting more than one from you? I think you could. I, I like to at least let them know what I have um, it, in aspects to category. I like to say, okay, these are the categories I have. And, and I might say, what would you like to see first? Um, yeah, okay. And I might say I have four items that I think will fit with your company. So sometimes I'll do that up front in, in a pitch and say I have four products I'd like to, to show you today, just so they kind of have an idea 
Um, sometimes you might run out of time and sometimes you're, you know, you'll have extra time to show them some, some other ideas. Yeah. Okay. And then if you're following up, if you've presented say four or five concepts to a company and then uh, you're waiting for them to review them and, and check it up uh, or, or, or they've said no, but then suddenly you come up with another great idea. Would you then uh, uh, contact them again with a single idea that you said that you think that you just wanted to add to your list? Oh, you sure. Wait until got a couple more? Definitely. And sometimes I might wait till I get that yes or the no and to say, mm. and it, what's great is if you get a no, if you have another something ready, be like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And thank you for the feedback. And here's another one. So if you can have it, so you're almost always got something else ready. I think that's a really good strategy to use yeah. as well. So even if you've got yeah. five, maybe you only show them two or three and yeah. then you've got another one or two ready to go. Um, I think that's, that's a great thing to do. And usually in a pitch, companies will say, okay, can you please email this one or that one or these three we'd like information on or they'll if, if it's a hard no they'll usually know right away or if it might be a fit and they want to show the team then they'll let you know which ones so you typically aren't unless they're interested in all of them um sending all the information in a follow-up email to let you know which ones they're interested in please send it over and you send it over that information and then you know give them a, a couple weeks initially i like to give them because you no know, not it's unlikely they're going to look, you know, have their team meeting that next week, but then, then start that follow-up um, mode for them. Yeah. Good questions. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. I know we're out of time here. Let's see if we can just get maybe one or two questions in. And, and while I'm going ahead and uh, getting uh, Ravina, uh, if you're still on here, uh, unmuted, um, go ahead and please uh, type in your thank yous to April. This was a phenomenal presentation, a great way to end 2020. Oh, it was uh, quite a lot of great speakers that we had and uh, tune in for more uh, exciting things down the line for 2021 with IGA. Uh, but we'll go ahead and answer just a couple more questions. And if you've got any thank yous or nice comments to say about April, uh, then go ahead and you can type those into the chat right now. And please stay to the end because we still want to do our screenshot per usual uh, for our December meetings. If you guys could just hang on for a couple more minutes, let's see if we can get maybe two more questions down and then we'll go ahead and take that screenshot. Well, then I better put my hat on for that video. <laughs> you got to do that. <laughs> All right, is, the, is the person still here? Uh, yes, Ravina, I asked to unmute you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so we just had a question. Uh, considering the current COVID situation, uh, do you think it's a good time to pitch to toy companies right now? Like, are they open to outside ideas? And uh, how important do you think uh, it is to attend a toy fair? Good question. So I think definitely they are looking for ideas. I will tell you that most companies already have their 2021 year plan. So right now you're be pitching most likely for 22, okay? So they, they mm -hmm. buy in advance, they plan really, really far in advance. I know that seems so hard. Now some smaller, it could depend on the size too. So some companies um, may be able to get things in the summer and the fall of 21, but you're gonna be pitching, just know in your mind that it's gonna most likely be for 22. Um, I think they're always looking for ideas and now more so, I mean, we've seen so many contracts signed in the toy and game industry um, at Inventrite. Um, and then just, I mean, online and, and I signed two in the last month and a half, which to me, that, that to me shows that they're, they're, they're moving. Um, so definitely a good time. I think every time there's always time for fun. And honestly, there's a lot of um, categories that are sold out like different puzzles and different things where they're just sold out and they're looking for new ideas so definitely take a look at websites and see what the company is selling and, and what's um what's hot right now because that matters like, make sure you're following um different organizations on linkedin um that are great like the uh, Stephen, we were talking about that earlier um you and i about the Mojo Nation is great to be following. Um, Shai Tech Pop is is great to be following. Um, make sure you're following the, the Toy Association. Follow those those organizations because they come out with um, magazines and and information on what's going on in the toy and game industry right now. So I think that's really important. Um, and then. You know, there's so much you can do and so many benefits on Zoom and Skype calls. I don't think you have to go 
to a toy fair. Me personally, I got so many more contacts going to a toy fair than I um, even knew those companies existed. So sometimes you, it's hard to find all these companies, but if you're walking these shows, you're going to see so many more companies that you even knew were, were there. So that's, I think it's great to do that if you can, um, you know, but not everyone can do that. And there's so many resources online and so many um, great um, resources where you can find that. You can actually go to the New York Toy Fair and look at their list of, of um, booths, companies that are there. So you can do that mm -hmm. online. So just know there's different ways to get around it. Um, I like a good old handshake. I don't even know if those will be allowed anymore, but I like a good old handshake um, yeah. when meeting companies. Um, and, and, you know, there's been instances where I couldn't get in for a meeting, but I went to just go meet that person. I've been emailing back and forth for months just to meet them in person um, for, for certain companies. So and there's positives um, for, for both, but you can make anything work. And, and there's so many different ways to get around it where one company I licensed with, I wasn't even connected with them on LinkedIn until we were on the phone call negotiating because they just weren't on LinkedIn much. And then the other company, I um, got the licensing deal because of LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. just know there's no black and white in this industry. There's so many ways to get in to companies. There's so many ways to get around things. Um, you just got to be persistent and you've got to find and try everything. April, what about working? I mean, everybody wants to submit to Hasbro Mattel, mm -hmm. right? I, and I see that from everybody. Is that a smart move if you're just starting out? I mean, is that, should you shoot that high or should you maybe work with some other companies first? I think you could, I think you could, you could try it, but know that, I mean, I was on a meeting with them a couple of weeks ago with, with a group meeting, you know, they, they see, get, you know, over 3000 submissions or, or more, and they may be licensed 30 ideas, you know? So I personally think it may be easier to work with a smaller or mid-sized company. So, and I would never wait for someone's answer on, um, just keep pitching until you assign that dotted line because you can get yourself into trouble or someone says they're going to and you're waiting and you're waiting and then stuff just doesn't pan out. So keep pitching the, the pros pitch. This is a quote from Steven. If you haven't heard it yet, here it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm not supposed to say it. Um, um, amateurs wait, pros pitch. Okay, so pitch, pitch, and pitch some more. April, you, you said something that was really kind of amazing. You said, uh, keep pitching until you reach the dotted line. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. I, I've never heard that before. I think it's a great title for an article. Thank you very much. A oh, April, I, I saw him writing it down. Article, then. You guys heard it here. Just know yeah, that. Yeah, she gets here. credit. I saw him writing it down. You get, you get I, credit. I love it. I've never heard it. And uh, I'm going to steal it. No, 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 I won't. I won't. I won't. Just, just credit my name and we'll be good, Stephen. Okay. We'll be good. Well, one last uh, question real briefly. Uh, Judy said, what's the best video software or app to use? Um, I just wanted to mention that I have used InShot many, many times, the free version, I-N-S-H-O-T, uh, myself. And I really love that if you've got the Adobe Suite uh, Premiere Pro, depending on if you have that uh, technical talent, that's also a great one. But uh, April, did you have any comments on that? I just use iMovie. I use my phone. I draw, airdrop everything to my computer. I place it boom, boom, boom like this, put some music on, upload my voiceover. You know, did, so, did you do that video, the, the, the snowball? Oh, no, that was on YouTube for the company who really did make that product. Again, that's okay. not my product, but I thought it would be an easy one to, you know. You got me on and, it, April. Thank and, you. And evoke emotion with Steven. I was pretty sure he had played, you know, snowball fights before. So I, I was hoping it would it would resonate with him. But um, one thing. Just a quick mention, um, Shy Tag and Pop, you know, slash Pop now, they do do things where um, inventors can learn the toy industry. So follow them, look into that, um, and just keep showing up to these IGA meetings, you know, and, and follow InventRight TV um, because it's a great free resource. And I mean, these guys are pros here. I mean, I'm where I am today because one, I opened that book called One Simple Idea, right? And that's where it all started in InventRight TV, watching Stephen and Andrew 
became a student um, and, and, you know, they're a huge part of my success story. And so, it, and it takes a community. Um, like I said, I've, I've learned um, from so many companies in this industry and getting that feedback. So all that feedback, it, it adds to who you are as an inventor and can add to how your next products and concepts can be. So definitely soak that all in and, and um, keep up showing up. Thank Wonderful. you, April. Uh, Thank you, Courtney, we want to do, a, a, I think we have about two pages of people on video, so we Let's have to do it, do it twice. But if everybody can, you know, you hold your hands up, give a thumbs up, whatever, you know, to look excited like April. Be excited like April. Think about April. So here we go. Shot number one. All right. All right. Now, oh, Stephen was making a funny face on that one. <laughs> Uh, well, we got, we'll get him twice. So he gets another opportunity there. No, I'm serious. I was like, what? Usually it's me making the funny face. Okay, here we go. One more time. One, two, three. Here we go. All right. We got, looks like we got everybody there. Thanks guys. Excellent. All right. Uh, any quick final comments from uh, April, Andrew or Steven before we uh, get off? Uh, I just want to say really quick, thanks everyone for showing up. I appreciate it. If you're not connected with me on LinkedIn already, connect with me. I like to do a quick little video once a week, just some little tips. Um, and, and I'd love to share in your success. So let us know when you license that idea so we can celebrate with you. Excellent. April, great job. I enjoyed it. I took notes and I want this presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank All you, right. April. You're a pro. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming on. Thank you, April, as well, for the phenomenal presentation and the great energy, uh, as well as speaking with our audience today. Uh, and for everyone on here who's still on here with us, uh, we hope to see you uh, in our uh, future next meeting in 2021, so we can bring you more expert information in the areas you need help in. Thanks again, everyone, for coming, and have a fantastic night and a wonderful holiday. Thank you, Bye, Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. Thanks, Courtney. Bye.